at 1020 Wood Street, Verizon Wireless Telecommunications Facility. And um, again, left off when we left off, we'd already had a public hearing and we had uh, had a, a lot of discussions and stuff among the, the uh, commissioners and staff and all that. We have a strict time limit today. We've got to be out of here by 3.55. So I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna pick up where we left off without objection, by the way, um, from the commissioners. We ultimately, we as a group decide and how we want to run this but what I'm proposing is that we pick up where we left off and then if we have time at the end of the meeting then we can open it back up to public comment to anyone else that would like to, to share some thoughts from the public any objections to that proposal all right Rob you said you had a uh, had some additional information you want to give us I do and I think it will change the uh, schedule that you just lightly laid out I think this meeting will be shorter than expected so uh, I discovered this morning that uh, staffs made some procedural errors in the public hearing notice requirements under Chapter 159 of the Municipal Code. So it's entirely my fault. Uh, we only noticed at 300 feet when we were required by city regulations to notice at 500 feet from the project site. And so because of that problem, we want to re-notice uh, and the code also requires that the educational meeting that occurred needed to have a sign at the site prior to the meeting. And uh, that staff uh, did not put that sign up either, so also my fault. So because of those two things, we want to rehold the educational meeting, this time with the sign up the 10 days prior to the meeting that it's required, and rehold a public hearing notice with a 500 foot radius. As you're aware, FCC federal regulations require that we have a 120-day timeline to make the, for you as the Planning Commission to make your decision. That 120 days expires next Thursday. But FCC regulations also allow for the applicants in the city to enter into what's called a tolling agreement where we can extend that 120 days to a longer period of time in case procedural errors like this occur. So here's what we're proposing, is we've already signed an agreement with Epic Wireless, I just did 10 minutes ago, that says we will negotiate over the next couple of days to sign concurrently a tolling agreement to extend this deadline instead of to be next Thursday for it to be October 18th. Yep. So we would have all the way until October 18th to finish this process instead of next Thursday. And in that time, we would post a sign on the site about an educational meeting, rehold the educational meeting, then do the public hearing notice all over again, this time to make sure it's referenced at a 500 foot radius instead of 300 feet. And uh, then you would have another public hearing and we could do this again. So please don't express any opinions about how you intend on voting. Um, because if we go through with this plan, there'll be another public hearing where you'll have you'll receive comment again after an educational meeting and after additional noticing. And finally, we're asking that you continue this meeting until next Wednesday in case we fail to come to an agreement on the polling agreement and extend the deadline. And that way, if necessary, and there is no polling agreement, you'd be able to make a decision before the 120 days runs out. So that was a lot of information to dump on you, so I am happy to go through that all over again or answer questions. So I thought you just said that you had just signed a polling agreement. We signed an agreement to sign a polling agreement. So uh, we discovered this information this morning. Uh, we've been working all day and trying to figure out the best solution. Finally, I identified the FCC regulations that allow us to do this extension. We didn't have time to coordinate with the city attorney to actually sign a polling agreement. So what we signed was an agreement that we would collaboratively work on and sign a polling agreement by next Monday or Tuesday. And you wanted to set the continuation of this public hearing to next Wednesday as an insurance policy in case the polling agreement doesn't get signed by Tuesday. What time Wednesday? Well, we could uh, do it any time. I think that we can prioritize this. So uh, Raylene is in our... Any time on Wednesday is this room is currently available and um, I will make myself available at any time as well. And hopefully, most likely, we won't even have to hold that meeting on Wednesday. 
we could cancel the meeting, put it posted on the door outside City Hall and on the door outside of this room and email all of you and any interested parties that the meeting was canceled because a polling agreement had been entered into and that the public hearing would happen sometime in late September or early October. Right. All right, so Rob's thrown a bunch of stuff at us. I don't know if you have any, any particular items you want to address, but I know the I'm curious about the date because if all of us say, you know, we're all going to be off the continent that date, that's an important piece of this. Agreed. Is, is everyone available on the 21st? I can't be in the morning. I can only be there in the morning. What did Joe say? Eight, um, Joe can, I can be only there be only there. in the morning. In the morning. I can be, I don't think I can be here at all on the 21st, not unless you want to have it like at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. at night? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's okay with me. I'm available all day except for 11.30 to 1, okay. so whatever works for you guys. You're available at 7 p.m.? I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a motion? <laughs> if necessary, we could also entertain the end of the day on the 20th. Well, I've uh, that's a council meeting, so yeah, we'd have I'm, to be... I'm, I'm driving to San Francisco on the morning of the 20th and driving back the 21st. Okay. So I am not available at all on the 20th, and it would be later on the 21st. Rich, you what? are you free on the evening of the 21st? I devote my life to the Planning Commission. Wow. I'm here any time right. you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so we can tentatively pencil in 7 p.m. on the 21st. Well, it wouldn't be tentative. You would uh, take a vote and continue the meeting to a specific date and time. Right. Well, we'll do that later because we'll okay. probably have some other questions. Any other questions for staff about these new revelations? Well, I, if, we, if, we're, if we're going up until the 18th of October, because of your announcement, are you going to be here? I will not, but uh, the, the department will continue without me. No, I will not. I will no longer be working for the city following uh, September fifth. Okay. But uh, I am. I am only a cog in the wheel. It will continue without me. Okay. okay. Any other questions about stuff that Rob just presented? I'm. Um, the you know one of the concerns we had were the um, from our last meeting were the process by which all this came about, particularly the, um, the openness to other um, providers, the um, public outreach to other providers, and the, um, the research by which the rental agreement, the, the rental amount was um, determined. Do you have any additional, I, was, I thought Brian Gerving was going to be here as the person that negotiated that to answer questions for us. He's been working with us on this all day, but okay. uh, because of this recent revelation, didn't come to the meeting just now. Okay. Um, I have contacted a couple of other building owners in town that have an equivalent number of antennas and said, this is the rate we're working on. Is this a reasonable rate? And so far, the feedback has been yes. That is well within the parameters of a reasonable rate. Um, there's additional time to work on this now that we have an extended timeline. Mm -hmm. I think what we need to prioritize now is the appropriate public process, and we can get to the details of that um, through this you know, t extended timeline. It's also important to point out that uh, this is not an exclusive agreement, uh, that the city's procurement policies require above a certain threshold approval and require involvement of the city council, and this doesn't come close to that threshold. So the city what council is, has... What is that threshold? I don't know, but we can get that information to you. But city council has already authorized a policy at which they don't need to get involved at up, right. to, up to a certain threshold. So through that, they have tacitly approved this by saying department heads and city manager can negotiate up to this threshold. Does that make sense? Yes, but I can't, I can't say... I mean, I'm imagining a scenario where, um, you know, an employee of the city is approached by a long-standing high school friend mm. who says, hey, I would like to rent that million-dollar property from you for $1,000 a month. This is, I'm making stuff up here. But um, $1,000 a month might not be above that threshold. It might should be above that threshold. What's the check and the balance for that? How would we know? And, I mean, there is without some kind of public process or some kind of, you know, um, due diligence, it looks, it, Rob, 
it looks really bad. Yep, I understand that. And I'm, I, I mean, I haven't really heard anything to address that. Yeah. And that's a big, huge concern of mine. So what I would say is this is a, an important philosophical discussion that we don't necessarily need to get into the details of right now. More or less, it, it would be impossible for city council to get into every little minuscule detail sure. that every department's going sure. into. So they have to delegate some authority. Sure. There have to be thresholds at which they just say, like, we can't get involved in things below that threshold. But for the moment, I don't think we should get into the details of that. And I do believe it's an important conversation, but maybe not uh it's tangential to the decision that needs to be made at the moment rob did i understand you correctly to say <clears throat> that you had spoken with two people in the industry who had towers not towers buildings with buildings yeah. and and they thought that the eleven hundred dollars was okay fair yes i have spoken with two people one described it as buying a brand new Lamborghini for five thousand mm. dollars, and another one described it as nineteen ninety rents. That it's just out of proportion. So, you and I don't agree on that one. Uh, and these people are both in the in, in, yeah. in the industry. That's what they. I think they have the same job as this gentleman. Yeah, I want to say that we disagree with each other. We're just getting different information from different sources. But I, I don't. Uh, I don't think that the information you're getting is inaccurate, but I don't think the information I'm getting is inaccurate either. But also n feels tangential to the decision that needs to be made tonight, and we'll have time to get into those details. Right. Yeah. And I have a, uh, I had talked to, speak into your mic, please. I had talked to the chairman on this, uh, <clears throat> but he's sometime, I talk over his head. Um, <laughs> Is it possible for me to bring someone up from the audience to talk on my behalf because I don't understand yeah. they would be the expert? I That's think a question more for me agree. and the and the commission as a whole. And so I think we can, um, if we want to do that here in a minute. No, not now. Oh. It, 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 some other time um, when we yeah, discuss it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, uh, so we operate by city rules. And Robert's Rules of Order, where the city rules don't apply. And under those rules, as I understand them, is that if we have uh, particular folks in the community that have expertise on an issue, that we can invite them and that they can give public comment. And that within the parameters, if we have specific questions that we would like to ask, that the three minute, um, you know, once we're asking questions, it's not their three minutes, it's right. our time. And we can ask as many questions as we want. So I think the question to your parliamentary inquiry is, yes, you can invite someone that you feel like has pertinent information and they can say what they want to say and we can ask some questions. What is the date hey, today? I concur. Hey. Today. Any other, any, I see, it looks like you want to say something, Meredith. of August, you're agreeing with nope. me? Mark this down, let the record show, this day at this hour, the Chairman Jeff Reagan agreed with uh, Commissioner Ames. All right. Okay. Um, my, I mean, my concern, I've, I just, I want to make sure that as we move forward, we can address all aspects of this. I'm a little discouraged that we, we don't have more information on this item here today. But, yes, sir? Well, uh, reading through the public comments that the people have written and we've received and everybody's seen, um, the one thing that uh, this situation uh, that you're describing, Rob, right now is that it has not addressed the idea of, uh, can you kind of, Take us through why uh, the clock started at 120 days uh, before uh, people have mentioned that the, the application was not complete. Um, because basically, if the clock hasn't even started yet, um, you don't really need the polling agreement. We just need a completed application. There was nothing wrong with the application. The application was complete 120 days prior to next Thursday. That wasn't the problem. The problem was procedural errors in the public hearing noticing process by city staff, not by the applicant. So 120 days ago, you had every single thing you needed to make the application complete. Every piece of paper, all the stuff that was supposed to be done was done 120 days ago. I can't say that for certain. But actually, the 120 days starts from the day they submit to us, not the day that we determine whether it's complete. So the day we got that application, was 120 days ago next week. So if they just submitted one sheet of paper and 
that, that that starts 120 days. That that does not seem like that would be part of the federal code or whatever it is. FCC regulations. Yep. It's pretty unusual for the city to be working with federal regulations. We usually work with uh, state laws, um, but this the federal government has become very strict about wireless transmission facilities. Okay. If we don't have any other questions for staff. Um, is anyone opposed to open up a public hearing, letting folks that have come in from the public today share their thoughts and concerns? Yeah, I'd say if you have yes, but if we have questions for staff right now, now's a great time to do it. But if you if we if you want to later, that's fine too. Can I wait? Yeah. Okay. So at at this time, we'll open up uh, another public hearing, public hearing round two. Anyone that has anything they'd like to say, pro or con, or any questions or thoughts or comments you'd like to share come on up we ask that you state your name and city of residence uh, just for the record and that uh, we try to just because sometimes if you look around today you might not believe it but sometimes we the time limit is very very important so um, we put you on a three-minute time limit anyone like to share some thoughts or comments or concerns yes ma'am Well, why? Don't we seem like a jovial? No, oh, no, no. Hey, we're just, don't let the wood fool you. We're just normal old people up here. I do have a question about what was said tonight. If they don't sign this polling agreement, then the 120 days is going to be up a week and, and a half Rob from now? Before Rob answers that, if you could do a couple things. We're going to get Jessica to start the clock. And if you could tell us your name and the city where you live. <clears throat> My name is Marilyn Field. I live in Henderson Center. Thank you, Rob. Do you have a question for her? An answer for a question? Is this on my three minutes? <laughs> then I need Yeah, we'll hurry. Could you repeat the question? Well, it said if they don't sign that polling agreement for us to continue it, it sounds to me like the 120 days are going to be up on the 29th. That's correct. So the 120 days would be up next Thursday if the polling agreement's not signed. Therefore, I'm we're uh, recommending that the Planning Commission continue this hearing until next Wednesday so that if the polling agreement's not signed by then, then they could take action before the 120 days concludes. It would be to the advantage of them not signing the polling agreement no. then the time would run out? No, because we would be before the expiration and we would have the opportunity to deny um, the application. But anyway. All right, I'm going to get on with this. Okay. I attended the Planning Commission meeting this past Monday, August 12th, and left the meeting feeling that this process has been deeply flawed. I have many unanswered questions, and thank you for calling this special public meeting today. First, before Monday's meeting, I drove completely around the block. I didn't see the signage, but we know that now it wasn't there. Second, we found out on Monday that the commission is facing a timeline. If they don't act within a 20-day period, the Verizon contract will be approved automatically. I understand the delays were on the part of Epic and Verizon. It's to their advantage to delay. Um, I would say that because Epic Verizon did not act in a timely manner, then the 120 days should be begin again. There, the first of all, the 1,100 per month lease is a joke. I was looking on the internet, and it's nothing unusual to get $45,000 or more a year, especially for this prime piece of property where Verizon does not have to spend 170 some thousand dollars or more to build a tower. Um, it just, it just the $1,100 is mind-blowing. It's a very sweet deal for Verizon at the expense of the citizens of Eureka. Also, is Verizon now going to be able to co-lease their equipment and be making money on the equipment that they're putting on the tower? One of your duties is to do what is best for the community you represent. And that is what you're commissioned with, is entering into an agreement to basically give away the rights to the water tower for a pittance best for the community. A few years ago, another cell phone carrier was turned down to put their equipment on the water tower. Why was that? What reasons were they turned down? Why wasn't that approved, and why is this proposal getting the go-ahead? I still have questions about how the cell towers got at the Hebrew Christian Church. Years ago, I tried to see where the permit was, who issued the permit. There's nothing that shows, and now from one cell tower to four, Anyway, my time's up. That's okay, but you did a wonderful job of summarizing that. Before you go, a couple of thoughts. Uh, on your Mark your calendar for 
um, August 21st, that's next Wednesday, we'll have tentatively another meeting. And then uh, if you will hang out after the meeting, I can answer your question about the towers at the Hebrew Christian Church. Thank you. Um, I, I, I know I look young and fit, but I'm actually an old geezer, and I was on this planning commission when those were passed, and so I can tell you about that. Would anyone else like to address the commission? Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Caroline Griffith. I live a block away from the proposed site. Um, actually, on foggy nights, uh, it's like a UFO is shining into my bedroom window. It's how close I am. Uh, and I came today because I had some questions and issues with the process, and I'm really glad to hear that um, the cities realize that there have been issues with that, and then we're going to start over again, uh, because it is very important, I think, to get all that public input. And um, just like the woman before me had some questions about how the $1,100 a month number was come to, um, I did my own research as well on the internet and found that uh, usually the the range is between fifteen hundred mo a month and thirty five hundred a month, um, and that's pretty average. Uh, and we're talking about a company also that had f fifteen billion dollars in net profits last year. So um, we really don't need to be giving them a lot of breaks. Uh, we're the ones here in the city of Eureka that could be using that money for myriad things. So you all know what we could use that money for, and so. Um, it seems to me that giving them a sweetheart deal for prime real estate isn't in the best interest of the city. Uh, but if the $1,100 a month is what we've arrived at and that's what we're getting, um, I propose that we do, um, we ask for an incentive for the citizens of Eureka to give them that prime real estate. And that Verizon then contributes to the community either through helping the Boys and Girls Club, which is right there, providing internet service to our schools. If this is really about public safety, are our public safety agencies having to pay for service or are we going to get it for free because we gave them that sweet deal? So, um, And I will definitely be at meetings as this goes forward if they are properly noticed and I know about them. Um, and so we can discuss these things further, but thank you. Thanks for coming in, and if you like meetings, we have a whole ar array of councils and commissions that they're always looking for volunteers for, and it's actually quite fun, and you get to learn a lot, so don't hesitate to volunteer for those. Would anyone else like to, uh, yeah, come on up. It's thank you, you thank you. Chair, for you get to learn how up. to use the button and raise the podium. It's kind of fun. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank you all for um, for being attentive and thoughtful. I'm sorry, could you tell us your name and city Oh, yes, residence? I'm sorry. My name is Joaquin Dominic, and I live in Eureka. I live on uh, Ellen Russ Street, about a block from the water tower. My partner is Dulcie, she spoke yesterday. Mm. And uh, Stephanie and, and us have, have educated ourselves quite thoroughly around these matters, and so we know a lot about these issues. So, um, But thank you, I want to thank you for being attentive and thoughtful with this in particular matter, and thank you for catching this before this just was voted on. I, I thank you, and thank you for, um, uh, Rob, for admitting that it w maybe it was an error on the city's part, although I, I, I'm not sure if the cell phone uh, company, w it was their responsibility to put up signage. Um, I, I was curious, this change is what I was going to read because of this new development, but um, I was kind of curious about, you know, the process, if the process wasn't originally followed, there was this precedent of another company wanting to rent the tower, put the cell phone, uh, you know, uh, antenna on the tower. They were denied that. I'm also curious about why, and why maybe this new company would get to access that as well. So. Um, I have a curiosity about that. Um, most of my our arguments were about the public process and and so on and so forth. So that's been addressed. Um, I think an aesthetic an aesthetic argument can be made um, that the water tower is becoming overburdened by radio towers and equipment, uh, as it already contains many on top of the tank currently. Um, I know that that's in the city ordinance. Um, uh, and going back to you know, whether or not Verizon followed this process accurately the first time almost makes it seem like, well, if, if they didn't play by the ordinances carefully, why should we give them another chance? And when they've, uh, when, uh, so it, I'm a little unclear about where that responsibility uh, has, has been as far as, well, is it the city's error or is this, 
you know, you know, how, how, who's responsible there? Because we're just, we're just, oh, we're just setting the clock over and giving everybody a new chance. So, we're not opposed to wireless technology, and uh, we have cell phones. In fact, Verizon's our carrier. So, you know, thank you, thank you for being, it's, thank you for the signal being in this area. So that's great. Um, we think that this is a residential area. Um, ordinance requires it be in a non-residential area, and. Um, for all intents and purposes, this is one block surrounded by residences in close proximity to the firefighters training hall, and right on top of them. And I know that the the you know the, the radiation doesn't supposedly doesn't extend you know to un, uh, safe levels that far. But we have boys and girls club sandwiched right between the one on uh, the Hebrew Christian Church, and also the Boy Scouts. So I would consider that. Thank you for coming down and sharing your thoughts. Really Thank appreciate you very it. Much. Thanks. Anybody else? Yes. Hello, everybody. Hello. My name is Leslie Leach, and I live in Eureka, Caddy Corner, from the Water Tower. And I saw yesterday's paper, and it seems like the senior planner said that it wasn't a good thing for Eureka citizens. I know the time standard goofed up and put my comments in, but it was kind of funny. Anyway, I'm not here to joke. I just want to say once again that I don't understand how one company's customers is for the public good of Eureka. It just doesn't sit well with me. I know a lot of people use Verizon, but it just doesn't seem right, especially in an area that has fairly good coverage. We talk about a gap. I haven't heard anybody I know a lot of people around there and they don't have drop calls or problems the fire department is always going in and out of there and that is another concern of mine um, firefighters are brave people right mm -hmm. yet they are concerned about having their headquarters their working space next to cell phone towers so I, I really think some more real thinking needs to go into this and I've submitted comments, and so has my neighbor, Stephanie Guy. So just hope you have a few minutes to come over. Thanks again for coming down. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I uh, read those comments um, by the staff member in the paper, too, and I thought, I don't think they quoted that staff member right. Because I was at the meeting, and I didn't ever hear that. But There, there were several errors yeah. in that uh, article, and we're uh, issuing a memo to them later today uh, asking them to uh, retract some of their um, misquotes. That may be correct. Yeah, well, yeah, right. yeah. Either way, would anyone else like to share some thoughts or comments? Yes, sir. Come on up. Hello. Nice to see you all again. Yes. Uh, Mark Lobaugh, Epic Wireless. Uh, just a couple corrections. It's it's called a tolling agreement with a T and not with a P. Thank just so you. we're all on the same page. Um, so uh, you know we're we're fully uh, agreeable to this whole scenario that's playing out and. Uh, We'll, we want to get it right. I think Verizon's message here is that we want to get it right. And if uh, noticing wasn't done properly and signage and so forth, let's get it right. Yeah. And we'll fix it and we'll come back. We'll hold another meeting, answer you know, additional questions if folks have additional questions. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, Verizon has one goal, and that's to improve communications in the city. Mm -hmm. And so just, just a little background, we build sites for the future. Okay, so a lot of folks will say, well, gee, my phone works great today. We're not necessarily building for it right today, okay? Mm -hmm. These, the, uh, the demand on the network is, is growing exponentially. We don't have the luxury of being able to build these sites, you know, at a drop of a hat. They take years in, in some mm -hmm. cases. So uh, it's, it's a very important site, and I would hope that you folks would have the hindsight to be able to prioritize this in your minds and think about what we're doing here. We're placing eight antennas on an enormous existing structure. This is, you, it doesn't get any better than this. This is, this is the perfect structure for a communication site. So uh, once again, thank you very much for hearing me out and uh, we'll see you in the coming months, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Right. and thanks for coming in. It is, uh, uh, yeah, that's okay. Just I do a, a have a question yeah. for you, Mark. Are you open to questions? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, one of the public comments that we received in the, in the uh, written was uh, having to do with the Verizon's first dibs uh, situation. Do you have first dibs on the rest of the tower? 
no, no, there's no exclusivity to this tower. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, as I meant to discuss that. We're simply a tenant. Think of an apartment building. We've moved into one apartment, okay? You have other carriers. Uh, there is uh, a, uh, an amount of exclusivity that would deal with uh, interference and so forth. They couldn't put another antenna such that it would interfere with Verizon's equipment. But um, th this is, you know, I think the analogy of an apartment building is the best one to use here. So. No, yeah. no exclusivity. Excellent. Any other so, questions? So another company, U.S. Cellular, could come under you? Another carrier. Another carrier. Okay, US so company. U.S. Cellular is a tower company, and they're the apartment owner, so to speak. Okay? Uh, they own the whole tower in some cases. That's not what we're talking about here. You folks own, the city of Eureka owns this tower, and we lease space to position equipment on it. If AT&T or T-Mobile, you know, another carrier came along, they could uh, lease space and hang equipment on this tower. From the city queue. Or on one of the other legs, one of the empty legs. Yeah, I'd have to look at the specifics of the lease, but that's how they typically work. But they wouldn't have to come through you. No, no, no. Now, if the city could enter into an agreement with a tower owner and say, hey, we sell this whole facility to you. Now you're in charge. You're the property manager. You lease it. You know, I've seen that happen, but I don't know what the city's intent is. But um, that's how these agreements typically work. We're a tenant. That's yeah. it. Thank you, sir. Joe, did you have another question? So you don't have right of first refusal, as the uh, was alleged in this uh, letter? Not, I'd have to review the lease, but uh, I, I, typically that is, not, that is not included. If you want to have a, uh, I, I'm happy to do some research and get back to you and make sure, you know, verify that point, but typically these agreements have no exclusivity. Do you, I don't know if, if, the, uh, if staff has any knowledge of that. Or. That, that question will come up. Yeah. We'll definitely research yeah. that prior to the next. And the good news is we've got some, got some time to do that. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, any other questions for, for Mark? Good, good. The, uh, uh, regarding the noticing and stuff, I appreciate your sentiment. You want to get it right. Sometimes that can be challenging because, you know, modern codes are kind of complex and, you know, they vary from, from uh, city to city. So wouldn't want, to, wouldn't want to blame you guys for not understanding completely what all the requirements are. Oh. Incidentally, that, that was not our mistake, yeah. uh, just so you yeah, clear yeah. on that. Yeah, okay. Rob, I heard Rob. He, he fessed up. The, uh, anyone else like to share? I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Joel Ziegler, Eureka resident. There are a couple of things that... Uh, I've noted and would like to addend to my previous comments. One is that uh, the Eureka's legal counsel should be queried about the process being flawed and whether or not the applicant should pass on the next continuance or, or be denied and have to refile the application because of the errors. Uh, Second question is, there was mention that there was a, going to be costs for training for Eureka City crews that maintain, monitor, and service the tower, and possibly extra costs for equipping. And those costs to the city should be enumerated as to annually or lifetime for the lease. And also there would be less efficiency probably with the new procedures that would have to be employed. Oh, a personal privilege, uh, the previous speaker didn't reveal his legal residence no. city in California, and he should be asked to, to state that for Thank the record. Thank you for catching that. I believe you're from San Diego, is that right? What? Well, I'll let him come to the microphone to, to put it into the record. Yeah. Also, uh, the visual aspects are negative. They're to be mitigated by painting the appended equipment to the color of the tower. I don't believe that that's 
adequate mitigation for unsightliness. If this were the Carson Mansion and the Ingemar Club decided to place a bunch of the tree-like snag towers around its property, it would probably be found to be not in the best interest of the city to negatively impact one of the highest photographed places in Eureka. The tower in Eureka, the water tower, is visible from the bay all around and is a landmark in the city and should be treated as such. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Ziegler. Mr. Lobal, what, what city do you reside in, for the record? <laughs> You want my residence or my office? Whichever you prefer. Uh, Folsom, California. Folsom, Mark California. Mark Lobaugh, Epic Wireless. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Would anyone else like to address the commission? Going once. Going twice. Thanks, everyone, for making the trip and, uh, and sharing your thoughts. Um, you anticipated some more questions for staff a minute ago. Is it... So we have, we have slightly less time than expected. The, uh, city, the deputy city clerk just indicated that uh, they need about 10 minutes to set up the room okay. for the next meeting. Okay, so we've got about five minutes. Have a question? Anybody? Okay. We have 15 minutes. We have okay. till 3.50. Okay. I guess we can just ask some of the questions now since you're here. But um, I, is, it, is it the responsibility of staff to notice... So there were two errors made. One was the noticing of this public hearing. That was the entirely responsibility and error of staff. The other one was for the um, posting of a sign at the site regarding an educational meeting, which in the code is the responsibility of the applicant. But in this case, the applicant uh, staff offered to hang the sign up for the applicant. So the applicant said, OK, thank you. And then staff failed to do that. So. Both are error, my, my fault. Uh, and so city's taking responsibility for both of those errors. OK, thanks. And then I guess I'm trying to figure out really if it's our job as a commission or our purview to, uh, I'm trying to pick my words wisely here. Uh, is it really our responsibility to have any input on what the lease amount is? That's debatable, uh, and uh, I've been consulting with the city attorney about that, and um, the current uh, legal advice that we're receiving is that no, not really. Um, but we'll have time to get back into that in more detail later. But right now, it doesn't look like it is within the authority of the Planning Commission to determine whether a lease rate is reasonable or not. So that is going to come to my second part of my question, which is uh, the commission, I'm assuming, are all Eureka residents. So as a resident, who do we take that up with? Mm. Uh, according to the bylaws of the Planning Commission, a quorum needs to live in city limits, um, but you can also qualify to be on the Planning Commission if you own a business in the city or if you receive water from Humboldt Bay Municipal Water or Humboldt Community Services District. Uh, to answer that question, uh, um, uh, call so a council member, call the city manager. You're saying call council, but you've also noted that the council isn't yeah. going to oversee I, that. Yeah, I, I would say call the city manager and chat with him, and uh, he can answer that question for you. Okay, any other questions for staff? Uh, yeah, so if we just vote this down tonight, uh, then the, we can restart the clock uh, for 120 days when they reapply, right? No. Uh, if denied, the applicant cannot apply again for 12 months. Okay. Because uh, I just see ourselves uh, getting back in the same situation in October at the Planning Commission meeting where we have five days to approve the thing. Say that part again? I just see we're going to wind up on October 14th with the same problem. We're going to have to, after all the noticing and the meetings, uh, we're going to have like five days before the 120 days is up. And we're just bringing back in the same boat, like, oh, you got to pass it, otherwise it's automatic. So um, I'm just thinking, That's let's a, just deny it. Well, there, we'll, we'll do get it. back to another option for you. But uh, the October 18th, we baked in quite a bit of cushion and expect that the next public hearing, um, once all the procedural uh, errors are, are rectified, 
would be much sooner than that. So we're not suggesting that the next public hearing would be October 18th. We think it would more likely be near the end of September. When? Well. Near the end of September. Pending your schedules. We'd have a special special meeting. Yes, it would be a special uh, meeting. Yes. Well, but I'm just thinking, you know, there's going to be a lot of controversy over this. I think it would be a lot easier just to deny it and then go with the, uh, uh, and then just have them reapply later on. Maybe, you know, everybody can flesh this out, talk about it. The community could talk about it for 12 months and not have the federal government coming down on us. So I'd make a motion. We deny the uh, application. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor to deny the application. That motion requires a second. Does anybody else think it's a good idea? Yes, ma'am. Before we second, can I ask a question? You may. So if, the, just to be clear, though, if this is strike down tonight, other people can apply to do the same thing. So if there are other carriers in the area, it's open season for them, correct? Correct. Another option on the table would be to deny without prejudice. So to deny, well, actually, no. Uh, so if you deny, this is a use permit, and so no one else could apply. So I, I highly recommend against a denial. Um, you could deny this application without prejudice based on procedural error, which would then allow the applicant to apply again and wouldn't have to wait that 12 months. So if you want to go down the process of denial, denying without prejudice is the route that staff recommends, though our primary recommendation is what we already laid out before you, which is to continue this to next Wednesday. And based on what you said, Joe, you would it sounds like you would like to move to deny without prejudice to allow them to, to restart. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I guess we could do that. Yep. You know, but then again, you know, it's 120 days. It's only, uh, you know, four months, a year long. Uh, discussion, discussion might be a little bit more appropriate for the city water tower as opposed to just somebody's building or you know the Hebrew Christian church. Okay, it's 341. My reputation's on the line. We've got nine minutes. Does that motion have a second? Can you clarify that motion? The motion is to deny the application at this date without prejudice so that they could reapply whenever they want. That's correct. Going once. Going twice motion dies for lack of a second the staff has proposed that we schedule a meeting on the 21st at seven o'clock that we give the parties time to sign a polling uh, a polling agreement tolling agreement t-o t-o-l-l-i-n-g a tolling agreement um that would extend it out to 18th but then we would meet on august 21st uh, if necessary to act should they not be able to do that Anyone like to propose that as a motion? All motions, we continue the meeting, yeah. Okay. Anyone like to second that? I'll second that. Second. Okay. So just to be clear, the motion is to give time for a tolling agreement, schedule a, a meeting special meeting of this body on the 21st of 7? A continuance of this continuance of this public hearing. Continue this public hearing. Thank you. Can I confirm that date for the tolling agreement is October 18? No. That would be uh, the deadline? Yes. That, yes. So they can confirm that at that 21st meeting. And at that 21st meeting, if that's not confirmed, then we would have the option to deny the, the application at that point. Exactly. Within the 120 days. I'm just concerned that the October 18th isn't enough time. I don't, yeah, I, I don't I'm, know. That I, don't, I think Quite frankly, I'm, you know, and I don't know. There's, there's a certain amount of stuff that's out of our control, so. Correct. We can't, we can't change federal law and extend dates. Well, he, the tolling agreement only allows for a certain amount of an extension, 60 days. Yeah, it's, it's up to the two parties, uh, but we feel like that's a reasonable amount of time because the intent of the tolling agreement is, to give, is not to give us a whole lot more time just to cogitate on this. The intent of the tolling agreement is to rectify the procedural errors that occurred. Uh, and so the FCC regulations set the 120-day uh, period and identify a number of things that have to happen within that period. So we're going to redo the public education meeting, repost it, and re-notice this public hearing. Um, that's the intent of the tolling agreement, not to just give us more time to think about and it. In the meantime, we will have a couple extra meetings. We can gather some more information if we if we need to. Affirmative. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Let's uh, let's do a roll call vote, please, ma'am, Ms. Jessica. Just to clarify, we're continuing to continue. Continuing. 
until this hearing until next Wednesday because that's 21st 7 okay. p.m. got it that's what I was just double checking okay Commissioner Ariaga I agree Commissioner Ames yes Commissioner Benino yes Commissioner Mayor yes Commissioner Reagan yes thank you motion is unanimous what time is it does someone have the time let the record show that this uh, commission adjourned at 345 thank you everyone for coming thank you